Everyone's business and every segment of society must be involved. Records show that children in Guyana are exposed to sexual violence mainly at home and in their communities. These children may not get adequate support to cope with the trauma of sexual violence. They are often stigmatized and if the abuse is reported, they must endure a tedious legal process that makes them reluctant to disclose information because of the trauma experienced when they are forced to tell their stories several times to professionals. The CPA's mission is to prevent, reduce and alleviate the effects of the abuse and neglect of children by effectively providing services guaranteed by children's rights in their communities and family settings. The state is the main duty bearer for the protection of children. So the state, there must be laws, regulations, services to protect children. And it's the state, as I said, the main duty bearer. But it also, for the protection of children, all segments of society must be on board. The Child Care and Protection Agency, CPA, therefore has established essential partnerships with non-governmental organizations, NGOs, such as ChildLink, Blossom Inc. and other local groups to protect children in difficult circumstances. ChildLink is a not-for-profit organization aimed at the protection of children and families through various projects. Blossom Inc. is a registered non-government organization that was set up essentially to deal with children who are victims of severe trauma. Now in Guyana's context, that is actually meant for us dealing with mostly children who are victims of rape. UNICEF was the organization that actually gave us the seed funding to start this whole project. So um, with regards to fulfilling like a child protection agenda in, in Guyana, I think I'm very grateful that they took that on board. So the Child Advocacy Center in Guyana is um, where all services come into one place. At uh, one point, in particular for children who have been um, abused or have been uh, experiences difficult um, context. And what is important is then it's one shot, one place where all services are coming together, justice, police and forensic, for example, and health, of course. So UNICEF has actually initiated the CAC approach and is partnering with the Ministry of Social Protection and few NGOs. A result of this collaboration is the establishment of Child Advocacy Centers, CACs, managed by NGO professionals. These are also called one-stop centers as its representatives come from many disciplines including law enforcement, child protection, prosecution and the health services who work together to conduct the forensic interviews for reported child abuse cases in a way that prevents the child from having to tell the hurt over and over. At the CAC we also offer the forensic interview in process. That is where the child comes to a child friendly space where he or she discloses their story or their allegation in depth with the forensic interviewer. This interview is witnessed by the child protection officer, the Guyana police force, an officer from the Guyana police force, and also the parent or guardian of that specific child. This information is shared with the director of public prosecution and the Guyana police force. In this instance, the child is allowed to disclose the painful situation once. The centers have environments in which children and families feel comfortable and safe as the offending parent and perpetrator are not allowed to access the centers. There are times when children would come and they would not talk and they would not say anything. So you have to work around to, to reach to their level to get the information. And this is one of the methods that I use. Um, I use the teddy bear. This is my favorite teddy bear. And I would ask them, like, what's your favorite color? And I would say, well, my favorite color is blue. And I have a blue teddy bear. And then they would start saying, well, oh, my favorite color is this, or my favorite color is that. And from there, I would, you know, you would realize that they're at their comfort zone, and then you just take it from there. In each child advocacy center, there is at least one forensic interviewer, FI, and a trauma-based counselor. As counselors, we also do court support for our clients and their families. 
and what that basically is is that we have a start to finish process with them so once the case is called to court be it magistrate court or straight to high court we would be there for that client and the family as a court support officer the first thing that I do is to show the child around the court setting. Then explain to the child the persons of whom they're going to come into contact with. For example, the judge, the defense lawyer, the jury, and also the prosecutors. I then allow the child to feel very comfortable to ensure that they, they can understand and flow through what is going on. I am also there when the child is being questioned, just so that they know that somebody is supporting them, somebody is there in their corner. At the end of this process, I will also take the impact statement from the child. This statement explains how it is that this child would have been emotionally and psychologically affected by the crime that was committed towards them. Once a report is made to the police or the Child Protection Agency, the case may be referred to a child advocacy center. Child abuse must be reported to the police or the Child Care and Protection Agency. If the police receives a report, the law says that they should contact us so that we could be involved in it because the child might need protection. Um, and when we, if the report is made to us, immediately we need to let the police know that we have this information. And together, uh, we'll contact now the aid day NGO. We will arrange the interview. To date, child advocacy centers have been established in regions 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 10. Since the establishment of the CACs, child victims of sexual abuse have experienced less trauma and anxiety due to direct support for their emotional care and healing through trauma-based counseling. We help the child cope through practice. Practice is providing education. Um, providing relaxation techniques, providing um, dealing with thoughts, um, behavioral issues, um, coping skills, and providing them with future skills um, to deal with any other thing that may pop up in the future after the counseling session is over. As many more CACs open, this initiative will play an even bigger role in helping to prevent child abuse and offering child abuse victims the services and support they need and deserve. You can also play your part by reporting any suspected and actual cases of abuse on the CPA hotline number 2270979. That's 2270979.